Like, I'm not in the shadows anymore. Think of a 13-year-old girl um, confused about who her true love is because her dad is saying, I'm your boyfriend. Pastor Bailey's position as a community leader was something that challenged Oates. I knew how to set a boundary, but whenever he's your father and whenever he's a pastor and whenever he has this authority and he has a record, <laughs> it's like, you say no, but what does your no mean? She says she was alone, suffering in silence as her father inappropriately touched her. He would pray over me at first, but he would do a lot of touching while he was praying. She says the years of manipulating made her ask questions. The thing is, whenever I was a kid, I separated my dad from who he was. I had to. Uh, that's the only way I survived. I will call him my best friend. In spite of the circumstance, in spite of the doctor's report, in spite of the rebellious children, in spite of the conflict in marriage, in spite of the challenging situations on the job, in spite of the community relationships, in spite of trauma and drama, there's still joy. And we are not the center or source of joy, which is why their joys can always remain consistent because Jesus has become the center of that joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength and the strength of the Lord is my joy. Fruit. Fruit. The fruit that looks like Peace. Peace. The Bible tells us as much as possible, live at peace with all men. Listen, be, be a peacemaker. That's what, Jesus, what Daddy would always tell. That's one of the things with the deacons that deacons are peacemakers. Our deacons and deaconess, they, they serve well, but their goal is to keep peace in the body of Christ. We're peacemakers, but not their role only. The Bible tells us all to be peacemakers. Be a peacemaker in your family. Peacemaker among people that come to you. With be a peacemaker. It's a fruit of the spirit of God that's within you. It's also patience. He said patience. That means that patience is not waiting and doing nothing. The patience is having a good attitude while you wait on God. That you can still have a good attitude. That you can still be loving and kind while you wait on God. Patience. Wait on the Lord. Be of good cheer and he'll strengthen your heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. There are times when God wants you to wait. Let me tell you, let me tell you something. <laughs> Look. I know we live in a microwave society. I know this. I know that oftentimes with things that go wrong, we want to fix it real fast and we'll do all this crap to try to get it fixed and get it resolved. Reality is that sometimes God works best in a slow cooker. Sometimes God does his best work in a crock pot. that roast beef and the onions, something happens after a while. That juice just begins to come out of that. <laughs> Potatoes, oh, mercy Jesus, carrots. Sometimes God does his best work in a slow cooker. And we don't like it because, we're, and, and this, the kids got a bad rap for this. While, while, while they, even when they begin to smell the food, they'll go get a bag of Roman noodles out and get ready to pop it in. Yo, know, you're going to eat in a minute. Just hold on. 
something is being prepared for you. But we have to learn how to have the patience. Not only is love patient, but the Bible says love is kind. Somebody say love is kind. Man, that's a word. You can't even say kind without smiling a little bit. Love is kind. The fruit of the Spirit is kindness. Do you know what? I'm going to just give you, we do this in our Bible studies. I want you to know that in any time you see the word ness, the word, it means the measure of. It means how much of it, right? The measure of it. His faithfulness, the measure of how faithful God is. His loving kind, the measure of. So when he says faithfulness or he says kindness, the fruit is dealing with the measure of your kindness. Sometimes we can be nice a little bit, but kindness is going to show how much we've grown in Christ. How much measure that man, boy, there's a, there's a young man here, and I, can't, I now see a couple of them doing it, but uh, we have, a, we have a, a wonderful member that's here, and uh, she's in her 90s, and it's so, it's so unique. Every time she comes to the church, she gets a personal escort to her seat. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. It's just kindness. Nobody asks these men to do this. They just, just kind. Just showing gentleness. Just showing hospitality. Opening the doors. Don't have, listen, it's all right. You open the door for your family and just let the next family go too. It's all right. Like, I'm not in the shadows anymore. Think of a 13-year-old girl um, confused about who her true love is because her dad is saying, I'm your boyfriend. Pastor Bailey's position as a community leader was something that challenged Oates. I knew how to set a boundary, but whenever he's your father and whenever he's a pastor and whenever he has this authority and he has a record, <laughs> it's like, you say no, but what does your no mean? She says she was alone, suffering in silence as her father inappropriately touched her. He would pray over me at first, but he would do a lot of touching while he was praying. She says the years of manipulating made her ask questions. The thing is, whenever I was a kid, I separated my dad from who he was. I had to, uh, that's the only way I survived. I would call him my best friend. 